So, it was African Penguin Awareness Day the other day, and I made this painting using that drawing tablet, and I thought I'd share some of the process with you. Let's get to it. Hello, how's it? Aware, welcome to the channel. My name is Ryan. I'm a South African artist in a complicated relationship with his sketchbook, painting under the name Aiku. At the moment, I'm busy with a series of videos where I'm testing out different drawing tablets and making an artwork with each of them. In the last one, we looked at the Wacom in 2S4, which you can find the review for here. And I'm going to be doing another portrait, this time featuring the endangered African penguin. So I've been quite fortunate to spot a few of these guys out in the surf because we actually have a colony on a small island just off the coast of my hometown. And we also have a rehabilitation center here and also in Cape Town where they focus on rescue and rehabilitation of not only the African penguin but other marine birds as well. The organization is called Sankob. They host regular penguin release days where the public gets to come and get involved, share in the excitement of seeing these, these penguins get released back into the wild. They also have school groups that come through and visit to learn about the birds and the marine ecosystem around them. So they're a really valuable asset to the community, right? Both in terms of the rehabilitation work they do with the marine birds, but also the education that they provide for the youth. I really enjoy these fellas. They're really cool to paint. They've popped up in a few different paintings and murals that I've done. So let's jump into this piece and I'll take you through the process. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is just get a decent sketch down of what I plan on doing, making sure that the head of the animal I'm using, in this case the African penguin, fits on the head correctly, and that the proportions of the face are also more or less accurate. I did change my mind about how I was going to do the piece initially, and instead of making it just a portrait of the girl's head and the head of the, the penguin, I wanted to include the shoulders and uh, and arm placement as well. So the beauty of digital art is you can just kind of transform and adjust placement and size of things quite easily. So here I, I shrunk her down on, on the canvas and adjusted the placement a little bit before then going on to the painting phase. And I'll just start off by putting in some of the mid-tones and finding the, the more dominant uh, shadow and, and light shapes and then just building up from that. I didn't know what I was going to do with the background uh, at first. You know, I knew I wanted it to go from darker at the bottom to lighter at the top, just to emulate a bit of the, the ocean feel. But was that going to be just a textured background or were there going to be some sort of um, distinct elements in the back? So I thought about maybe doing these pillars with kind of reef elements on them, uh, but thought they might be a bit too detailed for the background. So I changed that up and eventually did a kelp forest behind her and it's worth checking out photos of, of the kelp forests off of the coast of Cape Town they're quite magical uh, so yeah and then I put in these two these two sharks they're gonna be these ethereal sharks giving off a bit of light that would add an interesting dynamic to the piece but still the idea of sharks circling a figure is a bit threatening so I, I changed my mind about that and tried a whale shark at one point but it felt too strong for the foreground so I changed it up and just did a, a school of small fish you know, swimming by with a couple of miniature orca whales included in that. So yeah you'll notice that I tend to bounce around the canvas quite a lot. Uh, friends have pointed out before that I have a bit of a chaotic approach to things uh, but you know I can't work in a very linear fashion because I don't have I don't always have the clearest idea from from the onset as to what I'm what I want the finished piece to look like and I'm not always trying to directly replicate the reference materials so uh, I can't just move from one detailed element to to another I kind of have to build up the different elements simultaneously and I think that's that's maybe a better approach anyway because you can see how everything develops in relation to to everything else uh, rather than down the line finding out that this one highly detailed element that you've done doesn't work uh, so yeah I hold off on, on committing to detailing until I'm quite sure that I'm not going to paint over that, that particular element. If you're prone to more hyper realistic 
painting and doing um, you're trying to copy your your reference material then it's a different story it's maybe a bit easier than to do that that sort of approach so the idea with doing the penguin specifically for for this piece was that it was african penguin awareness day recently and i wanted to do something that would raise a little awareness uh, about that and we'll chat about that in a in a moment you'll notice that the <laughs> the piece is often set to the right side of my screen and that's just because i have my reference window open uh, just next to that i prefer to have it right next to it rather than on another screen so yeah that's that's why it's like that and just for the recording um it was just easier to manage things like this Okay, so I want to jump back a little bit here. Before COVID and everything set in, I had a couple of prints and a penguin themed sticker pack that I'd released to try and raise funds and awareness for Sankob. Unfortunately, at the time, it didn't really take off. I did make some sales, but I wasn't in the best financial position. I didn't have another income, so I couldn't dedicate the portion of the sales to the organization like I had originally intended. But I always kept in mind, you know, that once, once things improve, once I'm not sweating so much over my finances, I'm going to make that donation. So here we are. I've just made two donations to Sankob because they have a couple of different options, right? You can either adopt an egg, uh, you can adopt one of their juveniles and you get to name it and it's raised for, for release back into the wild, or you can adopt one of their resident penguins which can't be released for whatever reason and is homed at one of their two centers. I'll link to more about their adopted penguin program in the description below so you can check it out. So anyway, I have adopted one penguin egg and this guy, Oswald. He reminded me a bit of Oswald Cobblepot from DC Comics, you know, the Penguin. Uh, yeah, it's all scruffy and a mess. I love him. Uh, just looked a bit chaotic by comparison to some of the others that were available. Uh, so yeah, this, this adoption is valid for one year, but I want to keep this whole thing going where a portion of the sales of some of my work goes to an organization that I feel passionate about and whose work I really appreciate. So yeah, but we'll speak a bit more about that at the end of the video. Right now, I'm gonna jump back into this, let the music roll and get stuck into the details. So that's it, the piece is done and dusted. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. This is the first time I'm actually bringing a piece to completion using Critter. In the past, I've just used it to test out the sort of quality of the line and stuff when I'm using different drawing tablets, do some quick sketches, but this is the first piece I'm actually finishing in there. If you're looking for a free digital painting software option, then this is definitely the one I'd recommend. Anyway, about the piece, as I mentioned earlier, I am gonna be continuing this thing of dedicating a portion of the sales of some of my artworks to different environmental organizations whose work I really value and appreciate and get excited about. And I'm gonna be focusing on Sankob for now. So whenever you see a penguin pop up in a piece, it's most likely gonna have a portion of the sales dedicated to them. So with the release of this video, this print is now available on my imprint store. And that together with this one, the Penguin Matriarch, will have a portion of the funds allocated to Sankob and probably twice a year, depending on how much is accumulated, We'll use that to adopt more penguins and penguin eggs and all that. So this is kind of the, the goal for my work. You know, I wanted to have some kind of real world positive impact. And on my own, you know, probably very, very little I can do, a very small impact. But together we can probably really help out organizations like this to 
keep doing the good work that they do. So yeah, if you support me, you'll be supporting organizations like them. And if you want to toss a few extra coins my way, I do have a Patreon page as well that you can subscribe to. It's kind of just a tip jar for now, uh, but ultimately as things grow, I do want to add some exclusive benefits for my patrons because, you know, there's that extra bit of amazing. But for now, it is on to the next video. I'm going to be looking at another drawing tablet, a 23 year old Wacom in 201 and making an artwork with that. So if you want to know when that comes out, do hit that subscribe button. And until then, thank you very much for watching and happy drawing.